What is going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you all my thoughts on the brand new psychological erotic thriller by the name of Fair Play. Now this film actually premiered at Sundance earlier this year and also had a very limited release in theaters which is how I was able actually to see the movie but come October 6th you'll be able to check it out in the comfort of your own home when it comes to Netflix. Now before you press play on Netflix the question is, is it worth checking out? We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler free review but first I want to talk talk to y'all in the comments let me know if this is a film you were excited to check out but more importantly once you've seen it in its entirety what worked what didn't work did you buy into the relationship and the chemistry of our two leads did you pick a side who was right who was wrong but without spoiling anything i'll kind of express my thoughts a little bit later without spoilers but just a simple yes or no the ending did it work for you all? Yes or no? And answering all the other questions I posed to you in the comments below. So let's talk about Chloe DeMond, who's making her directorial debut in this psychological drama. Man, she captures the drama so well. I was very impressed by the execution of how she was able to focus on these main characters, more so at a certain point than others in this film, which we'll talk about later. But it is a very character-driven story. But the thing that I really liked about her writing, which we'll talk about here, is the relatability factor of what I think we all struggle with at points of our lives, the work-life balance. And we see the imbalance in this film, what it does to this relationship. As this movie does explore this unexpected promotion at this very cutthroat finance firm and pushes this newly engaged couple to its brink. I've seen some interviews where Chloe talks about this film being very personal because it's based on various different relationships that she's experienced in her own life. And you can see that personal touch of the film. Like I really enjoy when this film, it's a ticking time bomb. Like it slowly but surely gets into this very thrilling aspects and it gets very heightened but it's before that when the scenes are able to breathe when we're able to sit with the character and Chloe decides to close in on their face and gives us an idea where their mindset is very personal touch again there's some shortcomings in the writing that we'll talk about in my criticisms but from a directional standpoint some of the directional choices she made very impressed, very excited to see what she does next. Now, when this drops on Netflix, I just have a feeling in my gut, this will be number one on Netflix for a couple weeks because there's a lot of things that this film is trying to tackle, some better than others. But before we get into those topics, I wanna to talk about the main performances by our two leads. We're following Emily and Luke. As I mentioned, they're newly engaged during their honeymoon stages, very excited to share their love with the world, but they gotta keep it under the hush because they can't let anyone at work know they're in love. And I just found, Phoebe Denevere, who this is my first time being exposed to her, and we'll talk about that here in a second. And we have Alden Ehrenreich. Now, he plays Luke. And at the beginning, Luke is very supportive. He is very much a good boyfriend. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a ticking time bomb. And as that bomb is getting closer to zero, we see Luke and his insecurities really getting the better of him. And he becomes, again, this loving, supporting boyfriend to becoming a very toxic and dangerous individual. Now, personally, I found his performance to shine through better later in the movie because he gets a lot more material to play with. But all in all, I thought Alden did a really good job for the most part. Now, the star of this film, Phoebe. This is my first time being exposed to her as an actress. I know she blew up on Bridgerton a couple years ago and she's been in some other projects in the last few years. This is my first time seeing her as an actress very impressed. I was very impressed by her performance. She carries this film through and through. Now, she's given a lot more to do, so she has the opportunity to kind of show off those acting chops, and she did not disappoint. Like, she's given so many things to do in this movie, from giving the opportunity to show you this supportive side of being a girlfriend, wanting her boyfriend to have this position, to ultimately her getting the promotion and making more money in the relationship, to seeing her and her character dealing with the idea of performing in a male-dominant field to having her fight for the relationship, but ultimately fighting for her own well-being. Again, I can't stress enough, very impressed by Phoebe, carries the film, phenomenal performance. Now, getting into these topics without getting too much into the minutia or spoiling things, but this film is trying to tackle a lot of things, some better than others, but again, the, the range of conversations and more importantly, work-life balance, relationship issues. Let's talk about some of the things that this film tackles. Again, I found this film to be really poignant when it had its relationships being in the forefront and what it looks like when you can't be in a relationship with your work partner when it's not allowed. The film does shine a light on the women in a male-dominated field. There is jealousy issues within this relationship when that happens. 
When the woman's making more money, we see the conversation being brought to the table. When a woman gets a big promotion like we see in this film, the conversation's around that promotion. Is it because of what she wore? Is it because maybe she got a little scandalous with the boss who might be a male? It tackles those things, and there's so many other things that's brought up, whether it's exploring power dynamics, gender roles, there's just so much, just to name a few. I just really was impressed by how many things it brought to the table. Now, what I thought shined through with those narratives, I like the film handling the power struggle between these two characters. It did it really well, especially in the second half of the movie, which to me was easily the best part of this film because we see the miscommunication or lack of communication and just what happens is being so detrimental to this relationship and seeing this destructive nature of this relationship really, really shines through. Again, the first half, which I'll talk about here in a second, it was okay. Some negatives, I got to say, but it was okay. The second half, again, it is a buildup. It leads to these characters who were so sweet and so loving to them just want to kill each other. I thought that buildup was handled pretty well. So, Let's get into my criticisms that I have with this movie. I'm going to start off with some of the nitpicks first. The beginning shows the honeymoon stages of the relationship, them getting engaged, and all that different stuff. I just wish that they would have spent more time on what is the dynamic of this relationship. Because again, I'm assuming, I think they say it in the film, I think they're three years into the relationship before we see Luke uh, ultimately proposing to Emily. I wish we would have saw more of the dynamic within the relationship. What ticks them off? What gets them excited? And all that different things. I wish it was more emphasis on that. Never truly bought that much into a relationship at the beginning of this film. It came off very kind of stereotypical. Again, very much so in the honeymoon stages. As the movie does kind of allude to there might be more of attraction more so than like genuine love between the two which I wish that was explored a little bit more but again those were some of the nitpicks getting to more of the nitty-gritty of things that didn't work for me in this movie something that comes to mind is number one it's labeled as a psychological erotic thriller now I agree with the psychological it's also a drama there are thrilling aspects in the narrative I want to circle the word erotic <laughs> now when it comes to this we have two very which i i you know beauty is subjective with the behold i i find them to be very attractive individuals so they they can come off as sexy or hot but the erotic nature of this film i didn't find that to be too erotic man like i'm thinking we're about to get into some old 90s you know i'm thinking of bound i'm thinking of fatal attraction just to name a couple films that come to mind i didn't really find it to be too hot and sexy y'all like honestly i mean again to each their own but when we have our characters fully clothed while having these more mature sexually driven scenes which again you don't have to be butt ass naked to be like oh get hot and bothered and seen but i just felt like those scenes came off to be kind of dry if I'm being honest I was I just wanted a little bit more of that passion within the relationship because again it seems to be that this film is saying there seems to be more of a attraction more than like genuine love and building on a foundation of what sticks with them in their relationship they're just they just want to have sex like they're like bunnies in this movie but again I didn't find that erotic to be a strong point I didn't feel like it was that sexy when it could have been in my personal opinion but I want to move on to one of my main issues with this movie and that that is the film focusing a lot on their job. Now I understand that they have to show the high pressure of this very cutthroat finance situation. Give me one or two scenes. Give me 10 to 15 minutes to explore that. The film gives you like 25, 30 minutes. Now for some people that might work, to me it didn't. Like I felt by the end of the movie, I knew more about the deals that they were working and all the different minutia and the details within those deals. More so than I did their relationship. I felt like that was a detrimental to the film that we spent so much time. Again, I under I can hear y'all in the comments now. That's the point of the work balance. I get that element, but it's the time we spent in the office working on these deals, trying to save deals. I'm like, I'm not trying to watch this film to get like a, a big short, you know, a, a, a Wolf of Wall Street. I'm looking for what's this relationship like? What's the dynamic like? Where's the imbalance coming in a relationship? That I wish was more of an emphasis in the first half versus the whole financial element that is really heavily involved in the first half of this movie. And again, without getting to the spoilers of the ending, which again, I found the second half to be more focused, be more interesting, be more compelling, giving you more of that riveting, thrilling nature of the story. The buildup is there in the second half, but again, I just wish that first half would have spent more time on developing that relationship. And that's where my main 
main issue, wrapping up my criticisms here, I feel like this film is at a battle. It's battling itself with, again, the, the riveting conversations, the dynamic of the relationship, exploring work balance relationship, men not making as much money as the women. What does that look like? But then to spend so much time on the financial cutthroat, the boss getting in the way, who got fired, that that kind of succession of it all, which I love succession, no disrespect to that show. I just wish that it was more of an emphasis on just get more into how how did they meet? How how long were they together? Again, I think they said three years, but let's get a definitive answer there to really explore when we get to that ending. It makes it feel like it was built to that point because we spent so much time in learning this relationship that I felt like that wasn't as explored as it could have been in my humble opinion. Now, before I give you all my ultimate score and let you know again, with this being on Netflix, should you press play, before we get into all that, if you stuck around to this point in review, I just want to take the time to thank you. If you haven't already, consider liking the video, sharing the video, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel. Overall, Fair Play has some really great productional elements, whether it's the score, the cinematography, some great direction from the first time director, strong performances, especially for Phoebe, but the lack of the relationship building and seeing how we got to the point at the end, I wish was just focused on a little bit more from the start of the film. I'm going to give Fair Play a 3.5 out of 5. Ultimately, yes, press play on this film. And when you do, we got to talk. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, who was right? Who was wrong? I wish there was a more of that within the film too. Like if we could have spent more time, like maybe leaning more on Luke's side versus ultimately when you see the film, the film definitively lets you know who was right. And I don't blame him because that person was right. Certain people in this film take it to another level. <laughs> but anyway, let me know who was right, who was wrong, what worked, what didn't work. You liked the ending? Did you not like the ending? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching today's review. I really appreciate you all. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're staying safe. Consider subscribing to the channel, checking out all my other content that I have on the channel, and I'll catch you all on the next video.